Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. It's just fantastic. Captain's Log, Subdates 220628.5. A wide range of mines has been placed where we believe he will land the Ralph Mail, that is, and as I don't trust Crewman Bork, I've left him there in a cell ship, and he can correct it if he is wrong. We will then reposition ourselves and fire when ready. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'd like to give you some updates before we get into the subject that is the title of this video. And we are going to start with a tweet from Sinatra. Physically, yes, yeah, she's okay looking, but she is one of the worst humans alive, which is actually a part of a retweet from New York Post, who tweeted out, Amber Heard is one of the most beautiful faces according to science. The mistake made by many, and that includes Sunut to an extent, is physical attributes and the actions of the person aren't necessarily mutually exclusive, although one can safely surmise based on what she is determined to be by science, to be beautiful that is, and her actions, yeah, she suffers from crazy eyes. Full-blown crazy eyes. And when others in the tweet say that they don't trust science because of this, do try to separate the physical side from the her person. The article itself talks about Dr. Julian De Silva, a British cosmetic surgeon who used facial mapping technology to find that Amber Heard's face is 91.85% close to perfect, according to the golden ratio. I'm guessing that's not the same as getting ratioed on Twitter. Yippee, Kai, fecking, yay. The golden ratio, alternatively signified by the Greek letter phi, can be observed in a manner of life and design, and the closer the proportions of any given object are to phi, the more perfectly balanced they appear. De Silva analyzed 12 points on Amber Heard's face, using a red carpet image from 2016, to measure between her eyes, nose, lips, chin, and overall head to get the nearly 92% score. In 2016, in an interview to US Weekly, Dr. De Silva said that the Greeks discovered that the ratio occurs everywhere in nature and for thousands of years it has been thought to hold the secret formula to the world's most beautiful faces. I'm assuming the anti-life equation then is not a part of that. What a shame. Just to throw some other names out there who scored around or higher, you have Bella Hadid, who scored 94.35%, Beyonce 92.44%, Ariana Grande 91.81%, and Robert Pattinson 92.15%. Congratulations to all of you for having apparently near-perfect faces. I wonder what let you all down. Was it your eyes? Last week saw Johnny Depp and Amber Heard yet again trending because the judge has finalized the jury verdict in Johnny Depp's trial. So the judge overseeing the defamation trial between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard sealed off any possibilities that the actors could reach a last minute settlement. Amber Heard owes Johnny Depp just over $10 million, while he owes her too. I'm sure he just paid that up front for a laugh. Accompanying this bill is also a few other little stipulations. The more notable is the interest is set at 6% per annum from the date of the order. The order date is the 24th of June 2022. What's interesting to me is that the judge had offered both sides an opportunity to agree to a settlement. Benjamin Chu, an attorney representing Johnny Depp, previously suggested a settlement would be on the table. And in an interview with George Stephanopoulos, Benjamin Chu said that Johnny might agree to the settlement in which he waives all monetary damages if Amber Heard agreed to not appeal the case. Elaine Bredhoft, an attorney representing Amber Heard though, told NBC that Amber Heard couldn't afford the $8 million, but she also planned to appeal the case regardless and that Amber Heard stood by her testimony in the defamation trial. Well, delusion can be treated. What happens now is that the case now moves to the Court of Appeals of Virginia after 21 days. At that point, the parties then have 30 days to file a notice of appeal. She's got a month, people. A month to file an appeal and waste more time and more money with evidence that was withheld from the original trial. That was not permitted to be there. I can hardly wait for that. I'm sure it's going to be 
eye-opening. So now onto the reason that I've made this video. The reason that I hadn't thought I'd make a video actually covering this, because I didn't think there would even be a chance. In a previous video, I have mentioned that Johnny Depp said he would not return to Disney or work for them again because executives have made him feel guilty until proven innocent. The same can be said to Warner Brothers for making him walk away from Gellert Grindelwald, but Disney more notably because he had starred in five Pirates of the Caribbean movies and during the trial said that he would not return for $300 million to do another Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Last week I said if he did return, the movie would bang. It 100% would even if the script sucked, because right now his popularity is getting higher and any smart studio would want to work with him and capitalize on it. Disney, being renowned for quantity over quality, would surely want to also do this because they're pumping out so much content at the moment, some of it is starting to flag. Understandably so, certain genres of movies aren't as popular as they once were, or if they are as popular, it is not with the audience that have followed them for let's say 10 years. Or certain star power isn't as potent as they thought it was because they built them up over 10 years. I am intentionally not dropping names for that reference, because some pedantic shit will undoubtedly pop in my comments and say, Oh, but Meg, they're doing actually quite well. You're a tosser, shut up. While I was recording the first bits, I saw an article pop titled, Johnny Depp is set to return to Pirates of the Caribbean and is in talks with Disney about a $300 million deal. After defamation trial win against Amber Heard. That is quite the title. I'm sure this is going to be 100% legit. Oh, it's from the Daily Mail, so it might not. But let's indulge in this. The actor was the major lead in five Pirates movies over the past 15 years. He was dropped by Disney in 2018 after the release of Dead Men Tell No Tales. Not Salazar's Revenge, that title was shite. A source told Pop Topic that the media house is working on a $301 million deal to coax Depp back. Okay. I think we have something to look at. The Insider revealed that Disney are interested in patching the relationship up with Depp and have recently reached out to him. No doubt while he's touring they're getting an answer machine message. They said they reached out to the actor prior to his defamation trial against Amber Heard and asked whether he would be interested in returning for another pirate film or two. The source also added that another project is in the works for Disney+. Plus. They said the deal is reportedly for Johnny Depp to return as Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean 6 and a spin-off Disney Plus series about the early life of the Captain of the Black Pearl. Continuing, what I can tell you is that the studio has already penned up a draft for a film about Jack Sparrow, so they are hopeful that Johnny will forgive them and return as his iconic character. What I'm hearing is... Vultures. Opportunist. Their lobes are burning. They're Ferengi. How much gold pressed latinum are you actually willing to part with? You know, I'm almost certain this is in the rules of acquisition as well. I'd be half tempted to cite it. The source said that the media house is working on a $301 million deal, which is a very specific number and only one million over what he originally said would take for him not to even consider it anyway, to coax Depp back soon, and are also reportedly adding a sizable donation to a charity of Depp's choice as a gesture of goodwill. The article continues by pointing out that Depp lost out on a $22 million payday after he was branded a DV abuser. What makes this fascinating to me is, Stuart Beatty, who was the original pirate script writer, was the very first person to confirm that Johnny Depp was out in 2018. He spoke exclusively to Daily Mail TV at a red carpet event and said that the reboot meant Johnny Depp was out as Jack Sparrow. Being quoted there saying, I think he's had a great run. Obviously, he made that character his own and it's become the character he's most famous for now. And kids all over the world love him as that character, so I think it's been great for him, it's been great for us, so I'm just very, very happy about it. What I find really interesting on top of this is, it was recently announced that Amber Heard is going to write a tell-all book. Wow. Because this doesn't tell me you need money desperately, does it? I don't suppose we're going for defamation trial take two electric boogaloo, are we? Because chances are, as you've still not been willing to give any ground before, and we know this because you couldn't even reach a settlement before the verdict was ratified, you still believe your lies, which means you're more than likely going to publish more lies, which will end up with you back in court getting in trouble yet again. Is there a chance you might, I don't know, mute yourself, Amber Heard, Turd, Curd? 
Whichever you prefer, really. Now, as far as Johnny Depp returning goes, I do believe he should not return, regardless of the money involved, because the studio was so willing, so willing to have little faith in him, ditched him in the face of a known pathological liar, somebody who would lie under oath and was proven to later on. They listened and believed because they are so <clears throat> in with the progressive wokeness nonsense. And I call it that as useless buzzwords, but you know what I mean. The types who think that you should always just believe somebody when they make an accusation. Regardless of how popular Jack Sparrow is, Johnny Depp shouldn't go back. It would be nice to give his character a swan song, of course, but I don't think Disney would do it justice anyway. We saw that in the writing for Dead Men Tell No Tales. I personally believe the franchise started suffering when the fourth film on Stranger Tides came out. As a last thing before we end the video, I have a new video on Moisky Reads. Another short poem by John Cooper Clark. If you're interested in short narration style content, but there are some longer ones there, on the channel that is, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, and so on. Thank you.